This program is designed and produced by the community with the support of Kojiko TV. Hi and welcome back to the next episode of Our Home with Mayor Senzik. I'm Walter Senzik, Mayor of the City of St. Catharines. This is the first show in the new year. So I know a lot of you folks were in February already. There is no happy new year because it's January's past. But for those in our community that are part of the Chinese community, Gung Hei Fat Choi, as the Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, has just occurred. It occurred on, I believe it started January, I'm going to say, 3rd, 29th. So to those in the, in, in the community who are celebrating the Chinese New Year, I hope you have a wonderful New Year. So it's exciting to be back in 2017. I hope everyone had a, a safe holiday. Winter has been kind to us thus far, which allows for us to get out and explore our community. February is also Black History Month in Canada. So I encourage you to head on to, down to our Lock 3 Museum. We have an exhibit, Follow the North Star, where you can learn more about black history in our community and the iconic role that Harriet Tubman played as part of the conductor of the Underground Railway. So that's what's taking place in February, and there's a whole host of other events. But I have two special guests here today joining me. We have Stuart Dorcott and George from the executive director from the direct, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association, Niagara Branch, and Stuart is the president of the board of the Canadian Mental Health Niagara Board. So they're here to talk about a special event coming up and it's taking place on February 16th. It's Women and Wellness and we're going to get to that in a bit. Later in the show we'll be joined by Doug Getty and Kim Moore one of our local ambassadors for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts coming up at the Meridian Center on February 18th. So you see there's a lot going on in our community and starting off with Stuart, who is the current Canadian Mental Health Association president. He's been on the board for five years. He's also married with two adult children and has been a resident for Niagara for 40 years. I wouldn't have guessed. You Thank look like you. you're my age. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Stuart graduated from Brock University and is currently an account manager for commercial services at Meridian Credit Union, which is a wonderful financial institution in our community that does an amazing work. And George Kuzava has been the executive director of the Canadian Mental Health Association Niagara branch since it amalgamated in 2001. And the CMHA Niagara is the leading adult mental health agency in Niagara providing a range of timely and accessible services and 24-hour crisis accommodations. And so it's a pleasure to have both of you on the show, and I, I think it's a very appropriate topic that we'll be talking about today. Because in late January, we had the Let Bell Let's Talk Day. And what we saw on social media through Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and text messaging was people talking about mental health. And George, you've been around since 2001. Mm -hmm. More and more, the stigma of mental health is being removed, and we're bringing mental health challenges out of the shadows and talk, talking more freely about it. So I want to touch just on the Bell Let's Talk Day and, and the impact that it's had on your association and the ability for people to come forward and want to talk about mental health and family and friends coming forward. So before we get into the CMHA in Niagara, what you do, what kind of impact does that have, does Bell Let's ha uh, Talk Day have on Well, on my yours? Twitter feed on that day was hot. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> it yeah. was very, yes, it very was. busy. Yep. Um, they, no doubt that since 2012, when they introduced Bell Let's Talk, they've had a, a real impact on the conversation about mental health. I mean, they both had, had an impact, and they're also riding a wave on the conversation about mental health. So. Um, I give them credit for credit due, but there were also um, the media exposure has, mm -hmm. has increased. Yeah. Um, I remember a, a, a few years ago, a, a great series of articles on mental health and mental health needs. We see it more often. 
uh, in the newspapers and um, just in on radio and on on the television. So uh, where I I see it on that global uh, setting and right up to the federal government talking about um, shifting dollars for mental health or asking in, in terms of transfer payment dollars to the local level where I'm talking with, uh, I was talking with a board member from another agency and he openly talked to me about his struggles with anxiety and, mm -hmm. and mental illness quite openly. I don't think that would have happened when I first started here. Right, <laughs> right. And that's, I think that's the important part about having the conversations and having them publicly and encouraging people in their workplace, encouraging people at home and with their friends and family in the locker rooms. You know, guys yeah. get together, they play hockey and basketball and volleyball and, and they're in locker rooms and I, I still don't think that it's maybe as 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 much in those rooms but this this kind of discussion mm -hmm. can allow folks comfortably hopefully to, to be in a room like that and say you know I'm, I'm, I'm facing some challenges right now and uh, having those discussions I think it's a, a, a good and valid discussion to have I understand the concerns because um, in the workplace and people may be concerned about their careers mm -hmm. if they talk about mental illness and um, it's unfortunate it still does happen but there is a, a greater openness and a, and a greater support uh, for discussing the issues and uh, it's we think of it um, um, the same way that uh, the transition that cancer went through was something you didn't talk about it right. was very private right. and uh, we want mental illness to be talked about openly and supported when somebody has um, a mental illness and ends up in the hospital, we want people coming with flowers and sending sympathy cards. Right. That's the level of openness that we would like, and that would benefit everybody. And I, so <clears throat> let's get into talking about the Canadian Mental Health Association, what it does in, in, in Niagara, and then we'll, there's a couple other things I want to talk about. So what is it the services that the public at home who wants to know more about what you do, what is it that mm -hmm. central to what you offer to the community? We're, we're the, um, we've been around for over 50 years uh, in Niagara and uh, we, uh, next year, Canadian Mental Health Association Niagara, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association will be celebrating um, 100 years in Canada. Wow. So one of the oldest charities and there are branches across Ontario and across Canada. We're an independent, like many other agencies, uh, we're an independent charitable agency. We provide everything from a walk-in service through to crisis beds 24-7, vacation holidays or, um, throughout, the, throughout the year. Uh, we provide um, uh, therapeutic services. We provide support for people living in their homes, employment services, so quite a variety. We're not the only mental health agency in, uh, in Niagara. There are a total for adults, there are a total of 16 agencies, including the hospital that provides some level of uh, support for mental health and addictions. Um, so we're not the only one. That doesn't mean there's a surplus of service. <laughs> right. There's still a, a, a great need. Uh, we have uh, on our website, uh, if you need immediate service, if you want to find out more, you can just go to our website, which I believe is listed, yep. and uh, find out more about our, about our services. So you play the role of the administration, making sure the services are being funded and provided for. Stuart, you're the leader on the board and you've been involved for the past five years. What drew you to the Canadian Mental Health Association? Um, frustration with mental health service and huh. system and, and gaining access to service. Okay. So um, I had a, a family member go through anxiety and depression and uh, not knowing where to go, you end up at the hospital in times of crisis, waiting in waiting rooms, and and um, not received pamphlets, phone this number, do that, and and in a time of crisis or, and concern for a loved one, it, it's it was difficult to go through. And um, there was an ad about five years ago from CMHA Niagara looking for board members with a financial background, and I I found it. Uh, timing was right, maybe an opportunity to make a difference and, and make the system easier to navigate. So, so that's what brought me on board with CMHA. And so what have you seen over the past five years as being a volunteer with the CMHA? What have you, what have you seen and what have you been able to bring to 
a lived experience that you've been able to, to, to bring to the table? Uh, well, all the board members at CMHA Niagara, uh, it's a requirement that you have lived experience, whether okay. personally or uh, through a family or friend. Okay. Um, and um, I, w one of the things, and it's not just a CMHA Niagara, it's a collaborative uh, uh, amongst a number of agencies in Niagara, it was the access line that mm -hmm. uh, came out two years ago, George. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just it's one eight six six five five zero five two zero five. It's on so, our on our website. Um, uh, so if you're if you've missed that number, you can yeah. get it on our website. So now you you, you call that number and you get it like triage. So it's if it's urgent, serious, critical, go here, do that. But if it's which agency or service is best suiting for your need yeah. at the time, it's. And I, I look back and I think my life would have been much easier uh, if we'd have had that when I started. So it's just that, that ease of access because when you, when you confront a mental health challenge, you need that, that, that one point of entry into the system. And that's what this phone number gives people. Yes. So they can quickly get to where the service is provided. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that, that's, a, that's a good approach and sometimes it's, it's because you went through the experience that that kind of tool becomes valuable and, and you know, congratulations to the CMHA and all the other service providers that came together and got the number and, and you have to finance it, it's gotta be funded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's part of what you do. Mm -hmm. So you do have an event coming up on, on February 16th at Club Roma, it's women and wellness. So tell us how that came about and what's, what's the aim of, of that event? Um, I can't. Uh, that was brought to Niagara about so it was six years ago. So this yeah. will be our seventh event. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a it's something that um, we copied from our Halifax um, okay. CMHA. We and liberated. I, I, we, we liberated. liberated. Yeah. <laughs> we liberated <laughs> uh, with their permission. And um, it was it started out as a kitchen party. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Cool. In Halifax. Yeah. So. It's been. It's gotten a little bit bigger. In uh, six hundred plus people. So last year we had six hundred people. Our guest speaker last year was Valerie Pringle. Yep, that uh, was amazing. That this was, this year uh, the guest speaker is uh, Susan Stewart. Yep. And we have uh, unfortunately we're at well fortunately but unfortunately for listeners we're at capacity. Yep. Uh, Seven hundred people this year. That's so there's amazing. a waiting list. If if anybody can't make it. Wonderful. We already have a way to If you can't make it, just please send money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> that's our message. And but, I, but the aim for, is education and um, <clears throat> awareness and fundraising. So it, for those at home, we'll have the, the website will be up on, on the screen as well. Uh, I want to thank George and Stuart for the role that you're playing in our community because George, as, as you've outlined today, the services are there. We have services available for those who are, are facing some mental health challenges. And I think we're doing a better job of bringing it out. And, and Stuart, I think it's important for the public to hear the, the personal experience that you had with a family member because we often know it touches a lot of us around us. And it, you know, if, you, if you look at the six degrees of separation, it's, it's much closer than that. Yeah. So I wanna thank you for coming in today. And I want our listeners to check out the Canadian Mental Health Association Niagara Branch website to see the, the breadth of what they're doing in our community. When we talk about mental health, it's also talking about mental well-being. And mm -hmm. like you said, George, when you go to the hospital and you break your arm, everyone sees the cast. They want to sign the cast and say, get better. When we have something that's wrong with us from a mental health perspective, it's not visible. But we should be treating it the same way of, of you know, the sympathy, the get, the get better, we're there with you. Mm -hmm. So I applaud you for what you're doing. It's an important topic that we all must have got to be talking about. So thank you for being on the show. And after the break, we're going to be talking about the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. It's coming to our community. It's one of the largest curling events in Canada, and it's taking place right here in St. Catharines. So stay tuned. And welcome back from the break. So from the Canadian Mental Health Association, Niagara Branch, and their health and wellness event that they got coming up, there is another event taking place in St. Catharines. It is one of the marquee events that are gonna, 
It's going to happen in 2017. It's the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts at the Meridian Center. It starts off, kicks off February 18th. And it is going to be a massive celebration of curling in our community. We have some amazing athletes that are going to be joining us at the Meridian Center. So I'm sure that I'm going to see you out and about at the curling rink. And everyone is a fan of curling when it comes to the Scotties, as we know from the coverage on TV. So joining me today, we have Doug Getty and Kim Moore. And Kim Moore is a two-time medalist at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, claiming silver in 1997 with Alison Goring, and then bronze in 2008 with Sherry Madeau. She has also participated in two Olympic curling trials and won a Grand Slam event in 2007. She is currently a teacher at the District School Board of Niagara, teaching grade three at Gordon Public School in Welland. She is a Northern girl from yes. Kirkland Lake, yes. where she really found her way onto the curling pad. Joining her is Doug Getty, who is the owner of the St. Catharines Advertising Ag Agency, Getty Advertising. His interests include golf and curling, surprise, surprise. As a curler, he has been very active as an organizer, chairing the host committee for 2001 and the 2007 National Curling Championships in St. Catharines. So he knows what he's doing when it comes to organize, organizing successful curling events. And with the new Meridian Center, he reached out to Curling Canada to see if we can get on the tour for the Scotties event. And that was back in 2014. So it shows you how long it takes to get these major events into our community. So I'm going to start with Kim. Kim, you are the ambassador. Yes. You are a successful curler. How did you get into curling? <laughs> uh, started at a very young age, at um, the age of 12. And I had two very enthusiastic middle school teachers who took junior curling under their wing and uh, gathered all the kids on cold winter days and hauled them off to the curling rink and um, also influenced by two parents who who curl and still curl and uh, uh, an older brother who also participated in the game so it was in the, it was in the family in the family from the yes. age 12 on so yes. two things one is what, what did curling mean to you as a young woman growing up what, did it, what skills did it help you with I think sports parallel life, and it teaches you a work ethic. It teaches you how to get along with other people, how to work within a team. Right. Um, it, it teaches you that there are, are lessons to be learned, that not everything is going to go. You can't win all the time. And learning to deal, deal with those situations so that uh, you can move forward and be a better, better person or stronger person. And uh, even now, I look at um, teaching, teaching children and trying to emphasize that with them, that. Uh, you know, we can, we persevere, we keep trying and, and uh, you know, move forward, even though sometimes the results aren't always what we, we want them to be. So. And so in terms of your, the Scotties, so a lot of folks who are watching has probably seen the Scotties on, on TV. What does the tournament mean to you as an athlete in curling? How big is this tournament? Th this is huge. And I think if you asked any young girl growing up, who had a passion for curling, the one event in their life that they want to play in more than anything is the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. And now with the allure of the Olympics and, and um, it's big and, it's, and I'm sure that influences a, a lot of um, young curlers now, but it's still for, for that little boy, it's the Briar and it's for, for the little girl, it's the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. And really it is the premier women's curling event in Canada. And I would even go so far as to saying the world, because I do know international teams watch what happens um, with the Scotties because the competition is just magnificent. So, so in <clears throat> terms of the, the trophy, it, it's akin to the Grey Cup, the it's the Stanley Cup the for, Stanley for Cup women's curling. curling. That's amazing. Yes, yes. And when you played it, what was it like to play? Like when, you, when you played in, and you won the silver, where, where, where was the event in 97? In 97, it was in Vancouver. And what was that like? It was pr pretty incredible because it was my first Scotties. Wow. Overwhelming. Um, but luckily, um, my skip, Allison, had... Uh, been to a, a few herself and is actually a Canadian champion. So having that guidance and somebody there to tell you what to expect and, and lead the way um, definitely is, is a help. 
but uh, it can be very overwhelming for as a rookie experience and and even though you're caught up in the moment you're so caught up in competition um, you really do try to enjoy every minute of the event because they, they're memories that'll last a lifetime. Yeah. lifetime. Yes. So Doug, you were instrumental in, in bringing <coughs> the Scotties to St. Catharines, to Niagara, and you're a fan of curling, you understand how big this event is. So what, what, is it, what does it mean for our community to have Scott, the Scotties in, in St. Catharines at the Meridian Center? Well, um, it, it's, it's huge. We have, as you said, uh, Walter, we, had, we have done national curling events before. We did the juniors. And when we did the juniors in 2007, we used Jack Gatecliff Arena in conjunction with the Golf and Country Club. Right. Uh, we had 28 teams of junior kids from all over Canada. And we needed that, th that many sheets of ice to do it. Um, and it was pretty successful. But after that event, we had a lot of people saying, let's do another one. But we didn't have a facility in Niagara uh, that would, would accommodate a bigger event. I thought maybe we could do a World Juniors. So I went to Scotland and uh, met with the World Curling Federation and tried to get them to come to Niagara for a World Junior event. Um, and that wasn't successful, but then, as you well know, along came the plans for the Meridian Center. And when it was still under construction, I was able to get one of the uh, officials from Curling Canada in Ottawa uh, who was in Niagara on a summer's weekend, and we had a hard hat tour of the arena. And he took one look and said, put in a bid. This is perfect for a Scotties. So uh, with the help of you and your staff at the city, we, we partnered on a bid that went to Curling Canada. And weeks went by, months went by, but eventually the announcement was made that among the other people who had bid, they decided to come to St. Catharines, Niagara for uh, the 2017 Scotties, which is great because there's been... There's been a national women's championship for 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, but it's never been in Niagara. So it's a first for us as a community. And um, as, as, as you know, it's a popular, a lot of people watch every year, but it's never been something they could go to in Niagara. Right. So we're pretty happy to, that it's coming. So tell the folks about what the Scotties week looks like. Take us through some of the events, what people can expect as the Scotties comes to our community. Well, uh, we, have a, we have a women's championship team from every province and territory in Canada. And uh, there's 10 provinces. Um, and we're kind of unique because there's an 11th province for Northern Ontario. And we have the three territories. There you go, Kim. I know. <laughs> you got your own province. Well, it took a while to get there, though. <laughs> That's a fairly new thing. We have a, team, we have a team from the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and uh, Nunavut, who will also come. So we have 15 teams uh, when you also add in Team Canada from last year. So uh, 12 teams get to compete. So with 15 teams, there has to be a prior event uh, play down mm -hmm. called relegation, which involves the t three territory teams and New Brunswick this year. Okay. Um, and that will happen on the Wednesday and Thursday of the middle of February. And then our opening day on the 18th, we'll be down to the 12 teams that are gonna compete throughout the event. Okay. And, um, some pretty exciting curling. Three games a day, 9.30, 2.30, 7.30. That's important. Three games, three games a, a day. Right. <clears throat> 9.30. 2.30 and 7.30. 7.30. So that gives people an opportunity to come, enjoy the, the game, and then go to the downtown or, yep. or grab lunch. Go to the Heart Stop dinner. Lounge, which is part of the event. So where's that? The Heart Stop Lounge is at the St. Catharines Golf and Country Club. Yep. Which is... Entertainment will be there. Entertainment, lunch and dinner okay. every day. And we'll provide a shuttle to get people over the 406 from Meridian to the golf club. Um, and as you said, yes, live bands every night. Um, it's, curling is one of the few sports uh, at the national level that has a party connected to it. Okay. The Grey Cup does one. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, and Tailgate party. That's right. But curling does one uh, with, their, with their events. So the Heart Stop Lounge is a pretty key part of uh, having the ticket. So you get a ticket for the week and it gets you into the Heart Stop Lounge. Like give, it, give us some idea about tickets and... Tickets, uh, you can buy tickets for an individual game. You can buy tickets for the opening weekend or the closing weekend. There are several packages available um, that people can buy online, uh, curling.ca. Um, so you can pick the game you'd like to come to um, and your ticket gets you into the event at the Meridian Center. It also gives you access to the Heart Stop Lounge afterwards and the free shuttle ride over to there. Okay. 
So it's going to be a pretty exciting time in downtown St. Catharines. And Kim, from your perspective, like yes. when, when you get an audience in, what is it like to have the energy with a, how many people did you play in front of, whether it was uh, 1997 or 2008? What was the audience like? Well, I guess my most recent experience at the 2008 Scotties, it was in Sus Regina, Saskatchewan. So it was sellout every day and yeah. the, r the rink was packed. Um, and compared to my first experience when you heard everything, when you're playing in the moment, you tend to block that out, except when great shots are made <laughs> and the cheer goes up. But uh, pretty much you're focused on, on what's, what's happening. But then once the final rock comes to rest and you look around and you realize that there are thousands of people watching one game go on, it's, it's pretty exciting and uh, an adrenaline rush for sure. Really? Yeah. But um, it's interesting because even with all the kerfuffle, I always knew where my dad was in the rink because I could hear I could hear him. I just <laughs> would zone in on where he was in the in the arena, and uh, That's amazing. yeah, it just brought me back to where I needed. So are your parents to be. coming down? No, they they're retired in in the Okanagan, so they're living the life. Well, but, they're living uh, the life. Okay, yeah. but you're going to be there as an ambassador. You betcha, with my fellow ambassadors, Marilyn Bodo Good. and Gloria Campbell. Oh, wonderful! Um, we'll be there, and we'll be uh, well busily supporting many of the events, including the Sandra Schmerler Telethon. Yes, that's a that's very a, important event that that's happens. That's fundraising on, for for um, premature babies, yeah. and I understand um, there's going to be a substantial donation to our brand new Niagara. Um, hospital site yeah and uh, they look after neonatal care and they're looking at purchasing life-saving equipment That's amazing. For, for babies born too small too sick or too soon so wow. it's a great organization so we have the <clears throat> country is going to be focused on st Catharines for the scotties it's national coverage doug yes it's national coverage on tsn every day Puts us Every front game. and center yep. in the, the homes of curling fans across Canada. Live from St. Catharines. Live from St. Catharines. Yep. So this is, this is what the Meridian Centre was built for, to be able to bring in signature events. We're proud that we have the Scotties in our tournament. I want to thank you, Doug, for the leadership role that you've played in securing this. And I know with the 400-plus volunteers, it's going to be a great success. And Kim, I want to thank you for being an ambassador and congratulations for the sex success that you've had thank you. in curling. And hopefully this will inspire the next generation of women curlers, young women in our community that will look at curling as a sport in which they can excel in, get involved in, and develop the, the life learning that you've had. An and, to do. and actually, we through Curling Canada and their school program, there will be over 3,600 kids that are going to witness curling live for the first time. Wow. Um, they're taking in the morning draws on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so they're pumped about it. And Wonderful. We're proud of them for taking part. So we've got great <laughs> events taking place in February in St. Catharines, national events. We've got events for Canadian mental health awareness, and we have Black History Month in our community. So there's a lot going on. Get involved. I hope to see you at the Meridian Center or at the museum or at any other events that are taking place. So enjoy February in St. Catharines, and we'll see you very soon.